Where it's like, yeah, you're not connected, but you sort of are. Anyway, this is Monfrey and Myers Tell the Truth, where we try to illuminate you uh, on the mysteries of marketing, help you avoid getting ripped off, save some money, make your marketing more effective. And today's topic is, I have to look, it's a process, not a project. They see so us here's a everywhere. question for you. It's like, so sales has a process. Yes. You don't hear it referred to as sales projects. There's <laughs> a it's true, sales process. That's true. I did not <laughs> think of that. Yes, you're right. Yeah, nobody's jerking their chain about it. <laughs> but it is. You know, in fact, I would say everything in business is a process. You know, your business doesn't start and just, well, some maybe do rarely, but uh, it's actually the word for it these days is a grind. You know, you have to grind. You know, I don't like that word, but it, it is something that really you get up every day and you're forwarding towards the objective in a kind of an organized way, but you're also evaluating. So this is where you get into uh, attribution, right? If you're looking at everything like separate things, when in reality, the social organics fuel in the email response and that's fuel and the ads are fueling this and they're going, you know, there's this whole system going on and you decide that I don't think this social media stuff is doing anything. Just kill it. Well, it's, it's almost like you just took, you know, th two of the cylinders of the motor away. You know, that motor's still going to run somewhat, but you keep taking stuff away. Um, the system falls apart. And I think, you know, if you're looking for attribution, there are things that you can you can clearly measure, and there's other things you can't. But you know, we try to get clients to focus on revenue and profitability. You know, are the are the metrics moving in the right direction? Ironically, in the old days, marketing wasn't held to an attributable standard like they are today. Yes. And now we're having to go back to that. So it's like, for a while, the John Wanamaker quote of uh, half the revenue I make from advertising is wasted. I just can't tell which half. Right. Seemed like for a while we could do that. And now we're back to half is wasted. <laughs> well, I think partially because it's so fragmented. You know, it's, you know, and the way that people consume media and the way they might learn about your message or your offering, it, it is very fragmented. And so, it's, it is already a system running out there. It's like, how well do you fit into that system? Um, and, and how do you really leverage the different things that you're doing against each other? And then be careful with your measurement because, you know, obviously a lot of marketing these days is digital. And I'll remind people that it's not all digital. Digital marketing there's, is, is like a subcategory of marketing. Um, but it did bring in a whole different era of measurement and things that are easy to measure like clicks and this is where we get vanity metrics from. But the old measurements of if the company's growing, let's say another great measurement would be quality of leads. I mean, have, I, I've, you know, I've worked with companies where we scored leads. We had systems to score them. So we knew what the, there was a metric that we could use, um, even though nothing was digital at the time, right? Um, but it was still, it's basically the same process, but you might be using different tools. And then I think when it's gotten a lot harder to reach kind of people. Be, became around creating MQLs, right? Yes. The, so MQL, Marketing Qualified Lead, but what, we're, what you're really talking about is, we, 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 on this show, we call it a form fill, right? I mean, is that what we're talking about? Or an inquiry that, uh, or well, you mean a real MQL? Well, I think today we have to define a real MQL closer to, I think, what the original definition of inbound was, which is, you know, somebody that's showing intent. That's a lead, right? A right. lead is somebody that's showing intent. Um, I think what we have been doing is defining the MQL more like a sales suspect, like somebody that downloads right. a white paper or attends a webinar might be something going on, but I, I think it's hard to call that a lead. So I think that's become a vanity metric. But for a while, the marketing process was to optimize for how do we create MQLs that were really more of an engagement or suspect 
metric. Yeah, absolutely. Like we know that they have at least a level of interest that they took some really minor action, right? But it could be, I mean, I've, I've, I know people that like to read a lot of things. For, certain, for example, if you have a lead magnet that's a white paper or whatever we want to call it these days, a PDF that you download behind an email wall, right? A lot of people will download information but really have no actual buying intent. But right. we're measuring it as that. And, and again, if you have a solid process, you can actually design that process so that uh, you know, if you're looking at it like a process, you can design it so that there's a threshold that they cross where there, where we know there's intent. But if you're just doing an email campaign here and running some ads over there and that guy's doing this over there, you're not going to be able to engineer that outcome. At least I can't. <laughs> no, I think the, the process for marketing should be more designed around how do we get people to SQL as opposed to you know, how do we track their engagement? Right. It's a different question. Right? It's a different question about what are the projects to help get somebody sales ready? <laughs> oh, God, now I'm getting confused. Projects. <laughs> uh, you know, it is. It is. Uh, and confusing. I don't want to get too esoteric about it because, uh, you know, I like to talk, uh, you know, as it is in practice. And, and I guess what we're really getting at here is... Um, there's actually a number of processes that intertwine. And until you have some sort of deliberate way to juggle what, what actually is a ton of information, um, I mean, think about it. If you're making decisions, and some companies might be spending uh, millions of dollars on marketing, and they're making a lot of decisions. It just seems insane to me that those decisions would not be uh, considered overall and, and, and have, have been arrived at through a process that can be articulated. I mean, yeah, it's, I just don't it's see really the collaborative decision-making process as opposed to direct, directive leadership. Or, or top-down. And, and it starts right. at the top. Right, exactly. The CEO says, we need a, a new website, or, this, or the CEO can say, hey, you know what? We're going to engage our teams into a process. It's defined like this. This is what we want is the outcome. It's, it, to me, it isn't that difficult, but it, maybe it's because I've been doing it for decades. But, um, you know, there's no magic to it. It's really just look at it the way that you would plan any other part of your business and make those decisions. And then you really kind of shift. You know, as you start to execute, right, you're going into the project mode, right? But, but I, in my mind, I see things like this. So here's the project mode going on. <laughs> and then over the top of that is still the process mode, Right. And in a sense, you're the, you're the laboratory and you're running these experiments and you're seeing what's happening. And, you're, and, and hopefully if you're doing it right, you like what you're seeing and you change a little bit and get a little better, you know, and you're watching that. And it really becomes about not the metrics themselves, but the trend of the metric over time. Like I try to tell people all the time, Google's not like exactly accurate, right? It's really not about the number as much as it's about if your trends are going in the right direction, it should absolutely translate to revenue. Uh, and if it's not, there's probably a problem with your process or a lack of a process. I, absolutely. That's what I found that, in doing tons of research and working with you know hundreds and hundreds of clients. It just generally doesn't work the way to your expectations if you don't approach it as a process. Well, I Sorry? think, again, it, it starts from the top down, right? Like, so it's the difference between what you mentioned is your CEO saying we need a new website or is your CEO saying we need to figure out how to touch our total addressable market? Well, yeah, he should have like a big flag and like come in and be like, I am leading this, this marketing initiative and here's how it's going to work. And then he draws it on a whiteboard, right? And everyone sits in awe, right? That's how it should be, I think. Well, that's that's, that's what I also do. how that's also how people defer to projects. Like, <laughs> that's true. So, so it's I so would confusing. argue that it shouldn't be that way. The, the CEO should come in and say, "I want to uh, I want to address more of our total addressable market." Right. Specific Team, objective. How do we do that? Right. You figure it out. Well, that's true. But that's your it, job. That's true. But he's. 
I think it, I think all marketing has to be led from the top, like the top, Yes. you know, in fact, in most of the 30 years that I've been doing this, generally we will work with the top person, unless it's a massive company, but, um, just because it doesn't mean they have to do a lot, but, but they have to really be the cheerleader, uh, for the initiative and get people to buy in and actually move it forward. And, and that's complex. I mean, um, yes. you know, I guess that's why the consulting industry exists because there's people that, that can help facilitate that. But um, it isn't because that's how we want to do it or because we like it. It's, it comes down to what works. Well, and that's why, that's why sales cultures of yesterday are struggling today because back then uh, the CEO was probably the best sales leader. Like, this is the way we do it. Sure. This is what's been successful, and this is how we're going to do it moving forward. And then the whole thing changed. Buyers exercise more control. It's why companies are having difficulty marketing or finding clients outside of their personal networks. Well, and, and I'll tell you what, and, and COVID aside, I mean, it's easy to say now that well, in, if you haven't changed, you know, your, your approach in the last two years, everything else has changed. So you might want to look at your approach. But I would say 10 years. I mean, if, if you haven't, if you haven't uh, changed how you're marketing and how you're going to, to uh, create demand, generate demand, uh, and you haven't revisited that, or let's say you haven't done a, a customer survey in five years, that's, it's like a, a lifetime in, in marketing, in the way that the, the marketplace, and then you throw COVID on top of it, right? It just accelerated this change that honestly, we're still trying to understand what, uh, how much has changed. But it tells me that if you're still doing things the same way you were five, six, seven, ten 10 years ago, you, you're probably not doing as well as you, as you'd like. I mean, do you, do you see the I same agree. thing? Yeah. It, and that's, uh, we need a new process, not, we need a new set of projects. Yes, exactly. We need to. Well, like, I mean, we do. We will need a new set of projects, but we need to let the new process drive what those projects now will become. Oh, absolutely. And imagine how much easier it comes. It, it it is to budget. Like when you already know what you're going to do for the next six months. Let's say you know because now this this process is repeated on shorter intervals because things are moving so fast. But if you know, it you can be very precise. Um, and, and now you can be very precise about your return on investment and what your marketing program is, is making or not making. And then you're looking at each part of it and seeing where you can move, you know, bump the numbers. I mean, that's what it looks like. And it's not sexy, uh, at all. Uh, and it is hard. I, we, I think we have to acknowledge that, you know, it's easy to talk about this stuff. You know, it's very hard. Uh, and you know, that's why people like us exist because, you know, we've done it a thousand times and, and we can help. Um, that was a little slick sales pitch in there. Do you see that? <laughs> well, uh, it is, but it it's is true. hard and it can't be done in a vacuum. And that's, and that's why um, the silos are, are holding a lot of organizations back because those essentially are decisions being made in silos, right? Well, what do you think a CEO can do that is, let's say, faced with, a, you know, a, a, an organization resistance to change? <laughs> Not very rare, uh, but let's say that's you know, pretty common. What do you? What would you advise? How do, how would how would somebody start looking at it like a process and operating like a process? Train the whole organization on collaborative leadership as opposed to directive leadership. It's interesting because it's very not it's not that. specific to marketing. And I thought you would say something specific to marketing, but it's it's, it's bigger, an organizational it? problem, not a not a departmental problem. Right. Now, if they're already strong in process, I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't take long uh, to learn the marketing process either, by the way. You know, we, we, we're ta I'm, when I talk about it, I'm talking about a specific process. It's been around for a long time. And like I said, it's, it's assess the situation, figure out what the gaps are, do whatever kind of research to fill those gaps. I think one mistake companies make, especially smaller ones, is all the information comes from inside the company. Right. So it's all full of all the bias and everything. Um, I liked what we 
do if we're going to be able to stand behind the results of our work is bring in outside information that's objective. It's going to confirm or it's going to conflict or whatever. It doesn't matter. You're getting the information. So you're in that step of the process. Now you have all this information, and now it's hopefully good information. The decisions can be made a lot easier, a lot faster, and that's where the strategy comes Right? We're still not done in the process. We still now have to take that and create a tactical strategy, and that's where your websites and your projects and your email and all these things come in. Um, but you see, it's a very logical process, and it is somewhat linear. Um, but you know, I've done enough forensic research with, with clients. We've we studied almost 100 different uh, companies and their marketing programs and their ups and downs, mostly downs, um, and really trying to understand what the patterns were. A hundred percent of them did not have a deliberate process to make marketing decisions. And about 98 percent did no outside uh, research, uh, you know, beyond a little Googling here and there, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's significant when you see that those kinds of numbers were a hundred percent. I don't see that in research very often, um, but every one of them they couldn't produce a coherent uh, plan. I hate I hate using the word plan. I feel like it's a four letter word. Like I should I wish we had a way to bleep it. I don't think we do. But um, you know, People but it's don't just like the these plan, are the hard. Right? You know, we tell the truth on this show. You know, it'd be a lot easier for us to just be like, hey, yeah, man, let's build that website. How much money you got? It's like no, we we are. If we're gonna help you be successful, there's we need to change how you think. And how you look at the process, and hopefully, you trust us enough that we've done this a few times, um, and and then hopefully you'll be able to see the process. You know, as we're talking about it, it just sounds so complicated, but it, it actually isn't. It just takes discipline, I think, mm -hmm. and and you know, and structure. So you can you can bring in that structure. Here's the good news. You know, you're like, well, what? this we have we have a framework. I know Austin Lawrence has a framework. Uh, Peter Drucker has a great framework. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Moore has a framework. So they're out there. So you can adopt or bring in the structure you need. But now you have to have the discipline to, to follow that, right? And you have to instill that discipline, I think, in your, in your teams. And it, and it doesn't happen overnight. It's something that you're, you know, well, for example, we have regular, regular meetings with clients. That's what it looks like. It's not because we Absolutely. like to just, you know, hang out with them, and we do, but, I mean, you know, we're, we're there for a purpose. Uh, and it's, it's the, it's, we, we're getting back to the 360-degree communication uh, idea between sales and marketing. What it looks like in practice is that you're just constantly in touch with each other, and that meeting is scheduled, and it's an important priority, and it happens again and again and again. Just like our program happens every Thursday at 11 o'clock. There's a reason behind that. <laughs> and that's a project. And this is a project. That's right. But it's also a process. And it's called Monfrey and Myers Tell the Truth. I believe there's a logo <laughs> right down here somewhere. And it's brought to you by Austin Lawrence and Clarity Marketing Support. I, I hope I'm pointing at the right things because it could be completely backwards for all I know. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth.